Hello and welcome to another video. So in the previous video we kind of worked on these marble giant thingy-majiggies over here. Well, they're not really giant. They're actually pretty small. Anyway, um, this one we're gonna be focusing on this wall piece over here and I am not going to waste any time. Let's just quickly get into it. I'm going to assign a material to the entire wall first and just gonna call that wall and add in another one. Call it wood wall and assign that over here. Let's just get into rendered view. I'm going to change the color to see if it works and all right, purple looks fine. Next up, this is where things get interesting. Um, remember I made this, well, table material last time and it kind of looks all right from this angle. Like, okay, it can pass as wood. It's not perfect. Uh, I'm, I kind of need to work on that again. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on that and Making this better, I can then just use the same material on the wall and just play with the UV mapping. So let's get into the shading over here. And I don't think I'm going to look at the reference image much. I just want to look at it for, well, just to kind of have it in the back of my mind about how what is supposed to look. And the first thing I want to change is I believe over here I'm using this as a feed into the vector and what that does is that kind of like makes it monotone so i'm going to change that and use it for scale and already well you can take a look at the difference uh, already it looks a lot better it looks a lot more wood like and next up this is interesting because over here you can see it's just turning the darker areas into the darker bits and well the darker areas into the lighter bits and lighter areas into the darker bits and that is fine i mean if it's really far away but it's not this is really close by so what's gonna happen is i'm going to just select this over here and start doing things like this Okay, I'm back. And all right, it looks a lot better. Um, maybe the darker areas could be a bit darker, but no, I'm fine. All right, also it has a clear coat on it over here. And if I get rid of that, then, well, the reflection kind of like gets ruined. I'm just assuming there's a finish on the surface, like epoxy coating or whatever. And I'm just gonna go with that, okay? Uh, next step, well, so the UV unwrapping for this bowl over here was messed up, but the thing is it's really small like really small so no one's going to actually take a look at the inside either say well this bit um this bit so it doesn't really matter but if you do want to do it then i suggest just going into edit mode selecting all of these pieces and uv unwrapping that like them separately with a view and all right let's quickly get to our wall which was the purple material right so select that, this purple material over here. I'm going to get into rendered view so I can take a look at it. And all right, so I'm just gonna select the wood centerpiece over here and click on this tool over here. And what that does is that creates a copy of it. I can, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just call it whatever you want. And something that's instantly, well, you realize is messed up is, well, the UV map doesn't really exist for this. So I'm um, going to UV editing and just select this piece over here and okay, uh, it's straight up like doesn't exist. So I'm just going to get into say this view over here and on the, ver the wireframe view. So it's really simple, right click, um, UV unwrap and project from view and you have this over here. Next up, you can scale it up however you want. Um, if you don't want repetition, then keep it inside this. If you want some repetition, then okay, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. So yeah, I'm just going to just do this. All right, let's get back into shading. Okay, and it's a lot better. It's actually infinitely better, not gonna lie. It was basically plain. Okay, so let's quickly get through some of these settings over here. I want to get in close over here just so we can take a look at what's going on. And so this is zero. Well, if this is zero, then it basically means when a line is starting from the top, it's going to go all the way to the bottom. 
we're not going to have like curves in between. Uh, well, we're going to have some things like this, but it's not going to happen a lot. Uh, let's just take this in zero as well, because the UV on map, like the UV map over here, of this thing, it's 2D. It doesn't really have a third dimension, so it doesn't really matter. And so you can keep it at whatever value you want. It won't make a difference. And next up, the scale over here is what actually, well, changes a lot of the things. And all right, uh, let's just keep adding. So the higher the scale, the more, um, well, how do I say it? The higher the scale, the more bands we see over here. And let's just take that to 10 and then worry about this, the Voronoi texture. Now, high Voronoi texture is obviously going to be even more bands because the bands are being caused by the Voronoi texture. Without the Voronoi texture, it's going to look like this. This is actually amazing, not going to lie. So if you're interested in just this, then yeah, just, just do this. It's quite simple. Actually, you could probably just do this if you if you are interested i'm not saying you are anyway you might be let's get back to work um something else that i want is i want there to be some sort of well shape to it some geometry to it but if i subdivide this like a gazillion times and then use a displacement node to sort of well, displace it it's gonna increase the number of faces and like this scene complexity a lot so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just take a look at this which is the color ramp by the way, this is the default, just the color output. If I weren't, so if I weren't gonna use all of these things, the principal BSDF node is amazing. Anyway, um, so take a look at this. Um, I'm gonna pass this through a color ramp. Uh, let's just move everything over here. I'm going to pass this through a color ramp, and what that does is it basically turns it into black and white. I'm going to make the whites. A Actually, let's just make the blacks better, sharper. There you go. And after that, I am just going to pass this through a bump node, which is quite simple, through the height, and the normal goes over here. Okay, and now it basically looks like there's, well, sharpness to it. There's actually roughness to it. The black bands are, well, deeper inside, right? Uh, you can invert it if you want to, if you want the whites to be outside, but I'm going to turn down the strength a lot anyway. Um, let's just take a look without it. I'm going to render both of these, like with and without it. I'm going to actually control alt zero uh, to move the camera over here. Actually, um, let's just move the camera back. I'm going to render uh, this with and without the bands just to show you guys how it works, like how it looks. Not with and without the bands, I'm going to render this with and without the normals. Anyway, um, let's just move the camera a little bit as well. I'm sorry, I know this is like not the point of this video, but anyway, <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I am going to also turn down the clear coat. Because I don't want this to be a clear code. I know the image it just looks really actually. Turn down the roughness as well. Anyway, so this is the render with the normals attached, and you can see there's some reflections on the individual bands. Well the darker ones at least, because those are supposed to be extruded outward. And this is the render without the normals attached, and it looks a lot more flat. So depending on what you're interested in, um yeah, pick one of these two. If you are going for the flat one, then I highly recommend that you use the clear coat because flat wood usually does have a clear coat on it if it's being used in this way. Anyway, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, all of those things, and above everything else, just have fun.